I've, I've got chills up and down my spine right now. I've been totally inspired today, but what an amazing, amazing group of speakers today. It's an honor to share the stage with each one of you. Stacy, you're incredible today. Johnny, you rock my world, baby. <laughs> Jessica, you too. And what about that panel? Something, something that's amazing is we get to this level, and there are people that think once we get to this level, we forget what it was like to go through all this, and that we're retired now, and that you know we don't relate to people. But I got to tell you something. I've never forgotten one day the struggles I went through to get to this point. And listening to those guys at that level, I related to every one of them. But what's unique, all these speakers that we've heard from today, are they all kind of different in personality? Just blows me away. None of them are the same. And we sit here and, and, and we think, every one of you sitting in this room has the same opportunity. Did you know that? You have the same opportunity. You have the same information. You have the same message. And I know that everybody's always trying to figure out the best presentation, the right way to do it, there's a right and a wrong. The wrong way to do it is not to do anything at all, by the way. But really what it is, it's in the way that you deliver the information. Because all the information is the same. The things that change is your stories. I actually have a different story than most of you. But one thing I do need to do is, I'm a day late, but I wanted to wish every one of you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, a day late. Some of you are going, what in the crap are you talking about? Let me tell you something. I signed up in this business six years ago, or whatever it was, for an opportunity because I wanted to get a check on the 15th of the month, every month, for the rest of my life. And so we went to work, and every 15th of the month, Life Manage sends me the check that I earned. Is that amazing? That's my money, and I love it. And then it's, fa it's Christmas for my family. And that's why we did this. Yes, Stacy. I got in this business for one thing only, and that was money. I got in it for money to buy my lifestyle. My lifestyle is I just want freedom. I want to be a full-time dad. Is there anything wrong with that? Does there anybody in here want to help your wife or your spouse raise your kids? Because yes. here's the cool thing. For the last 12 years of my life, I've lived strictly off residual income. I have not had the so-called job. I did landscape maintenance for 18 years. You anybody know what that is? I mowed lawn and trimmed bushes and managed people. I babysit. That's what. That's really what we do now too. Is I'm a full-time babysitter, but I get paid a lot of money. It's better to get paid babysitting in this industry than it is the other. Because the thing is, over here, you teach everybody everything you know, and guess what happens? It benefits you. In the other industry, you teach them everything you know. Then what happens? The next year, they're you're in competition with you, and what are they doing? Trying to steal all your clients. This is the most amazing concept on planet Earth, network marketing. And I am very humbled to be here. There is a lot of amazing leadership down here and all around this area. And it's an honor. It's an honor to spend time with you guys. Um, how many brand new people do we have here? Wow. I wasn't going to say this, but I have to because I love this man. And we like to gouge each other once in a while. But we've been talking about the blueprint. And it's obvious to me that Dave's never read it. Because he works for the company instead of... Right, brother? That was for calling me a dork. I can't even believe I'm back down here already. It's like this is my new home. But we were here for Elite Academy, and that was, that was an amazing weekend. Inspiring. People's lives change. People make decisions. And, you know, all this group of people that's been up on stage, is this probably not a good place for you to be? Up on stage addressing the audience? Is there anybody in here that would not want to be up here doing that? Anybody in here want to be up here doing that? <laughs> not all of you raised your hands. Shall we try that again? This is not hard. This is easy. You just got to participate. But the thing I want to bring up is every one of them said one thing in common that they did bring up is don't miss the advance. Did you guys hear that? 
So I've never missed an event either. And it's amazing how that happens. Here's the one thing I learned about network marketing. If I want to make money, somebody else has to. You know that story they tell that when we go over, we're just trying to steal their money? You ever heard those stories? They just want, they're just going to make money off of you. That's all they want. I've spent a lot more money on a lot more people that didn't do a thing that I didn't get even money back on it, and I, I spent it, but I wrote it off. Is that a good thing? Somebody was talking about taxes up here. Do you guys realize you own your own business and you do? Yes. Johnny, I have driven from, we started kind of down in San Diego. We did a couple road trips on the way up, but we went all the way to Bellingham, Washington. And there was a note on their door. Nobody's showing up tonight, so we went to dinner. And as, this is back in the day when Tyler and I would go on two to three to four week road trips. Because we'd do meetings all along the way where we had groups. And uh, I'm not going to tell you the conversation on the way home, but he wasn't happy. <laughs> and I drove. And he walked, after I got done getting us to Boise from there, I wake him up, it's his turn to drive, and what does he do? He turns the air conditioner on and the music up. So, anyway, I throw, I throw that in there because there was a time, and that's why I got into this business, and my thought, my th my thought process and my theory on this is, Let's go get the work done now. I don't like to procrastinate. Let's go get the sponsoring done now. Let's go get the people in place. Let's go get our foundation in place. And really, that's probably one of the most critical things that you're going to do as a brand new person. Now, one more time. If you're new, raise your hand. Okay, and if you've been in for a little while, raise your hand. And if you've been in for a long time, raise your hand. All right, if any of you are not happy where you're at right now, I promise you... By the time I get done, I'm going to give you enough information that you can go out and get your business started and get to where you want to go. Because here's the one thing I learned about this industry. If I can sponsor somebody and help them sponsor somebody, I can build a dynasty. And yes, gosh, has anybody in here been told no lately? <laughs> Does it hurt? Does it hurt? It killed me when I took it personal, but I don't take it personal anymore. But does it hurt? Yeah, it kind of hurts. It stings a little bit, don't you? Don't it? Well, I'm not going to tell you when and when the day was, but I went through, and there was a time I had about 20 to 30 no's in the month, right? Is that possible? So I figured out what they're worth today. Or not today, but a while ago. Three grand a no. Is that pretty good pay? Per yeah. month. <laughs> per month. Yeah, we get paid per month, so I had to figure it out per month. If I figure out all the no's I got, that's probably, well, then I have to figure out how much money we've made. But the knolls are worth it because that's part of the business. And one of the things I've lear I learned, I used to take the knolls personal, and so then I had to argue, and then I had to give them my thought about it, and then they didn't want to ever be around me again. <laughs> right? Some of you guys go through this. But what I learned, is when they say no, they're just not ready. And you'll either get them later, or even better, they'll show up in your group. Do you guys realize that? Okay, but anyway, I learned to just keep going through the numbers until I found the people that want to do what I'm doing right now. And they are like needles in a haystack. Because I, I don't know what the exact percentages are, you guys, but I like to use a percentage scale to kind of describe to you how far, you know, how much distance in between. So let's just say 95% of the people will not build the business, but they'll what? They just might use our product. That is weird to network marketing because I've never been in a business before that that was the case. If they didn't want to do the business, they sure weren't going to spend $250 a month for red or purple or green juice that when you drink it and spill it, it stains your shirt, and then you got to buy a new shirt. Dude, these guys, are, this is a tough crowd. None of you drank the juice? I have a hole in my lip. I'm, I'm just lucky this shirt's clean. And Lisa's not even here to babysit me. But anyway. And I'm sitting here thinking as I was watching some of these people come up on stage. What, remember the first time we actually met? San Antonio. We're at one of the premier t-shirt signing programs. 
Some of you guys don't know what that is, but the person who does is laughing right now. But remember when we met Brandon and Lynette were having to get together? What rank were you at? Can you remember? I think it was the first time in San Antonio. Pro two or three. But it just, it just marvels me to watch people get into this business. You meet them for the first time. A lot of the pro tens in this company, that some of them we personally enrolled and some of them we worked with, you know, we met in living rooms. And I remember the first time I met Brandon and Lynette. It was in Jacksonville, Florida, I think. Bill and Cynthia had called us up and said, these two are coming up and you guys got to talk to them. And you know the story. You hear the same thing every time. They're awesome and that. I met them. And it wasn't two months freaking later, I met them again. I seen them at the convention. They were going across stage. Pro tens. How does that happen? <laughs> right? Dynamic people. We talked a little bit about Eric Albrechtson today. And Johnny didn't even say one thing to me about thank you, Marcel, for babysitting him when he was not the great network marketing, but the procrastinator, liar, everything else. <laughs> now, let me, let me tell you why. Coming down to help him, and he would go fishing. <laughs> right? I could tell you stories about all these guys. But the fact, when we started six years ago, it was at Tyler and I. This wasn't even in our forecast. We didn't, we didn't think we'd ever be down here doing meetings. I didn't think Brandon and Lynette would show up. I, I didn't know Brandon and Lynette. I didn't know any of you. For those that I do know, I didn't know you before. Think about that one. <laughs> but when we started, it was just Tyler and I, and we had to go out and do the same thing as everybody else did. We had to go out and start sponsoring people. We had to go out putting our foundation together. We had to go do those things. And you sit and think back. Here we are six years later, right? Six years later, yeah, we're getting paid for starting in the early days when, when we had a better opportunity than you. We were losing a thousand dollars or a million dollars a year. We were competing with GNC. Did you guys know that? We didn't even have product for the first 90 days. So go show the ABC prime time or whatever it is to somebody. What's the first word out of their mouth after they watch the video or, or we talk to them about the product? They want to try it. Well, we don't have any. We're a network marketing company. We're probably going out of business because if you can read our financials, we're about done. And we were so freaking excited, you guys, because we believed in something. We believed we had something. And I love it. I love the fact that our, our product is validated with science. Now, you've got to understand something. I've never read one of the peer reviews. But I love that it's validated. Do you know why? Did you see all the personalities, different personalities up here? I have a different personality, too. And I'm not attracted to reading. I don't like to read. Guess how many times I've read the blueprint? Now, those two interviewed a lot of us to get their information, to compile with their information. But guess how many times I've read it? I'm not going to answer that if you guys are going to. I haven't read it. But I, you want me to give you a, a, for those of you that don't like to read like me, should I give you kind of like the short version? 15 plans a month or more, premier school or super Saturday, no more premier schools, master class, elite academy, convention. How hard is that? That is how you learn this business. Now, don't misunderstand me. I think the blueprint's amazing. I just, my personality is such that I'd rather go to work and, than read, okay? And I'd rather go learn this the hard way instead of try to figure it out the easy way. Because once you learn it the hard way, you never forget it. I'm doing the same things I've always done. So a lot of you know me, a lot of you know my story, but for those, for those of you that don't, let me go back a little bit in time and kind of tell you where I was at. Because I'm sitting here listening to those pro sixes up on stage and I'm hearing their stories and their struggles and what they're going through and trying to find the time for this and all that stuff. Some of them have a, a supportive spouse, others don't, okay? Now, when I take you back in time, Lisa and I were both excited about our new network marketing experience because we'd never heard of network marketing, right? 28 years, going to college, getting an engineering degree. Run a, started a landscaping maintenance business about the same time, and uh, they came over and whooped the circles on us. That's what I called it. 
And the only thing I got out of that whole meeting, the only thing, and it's set with me still today, is they showed me how to make residual income. I don't know a person in this world that can be introduced to residual income that wouldn't want it. Now, I know a lot of them that want it, but they don't want to do the work to get it. One of the things, this is a little nugget. I found that I need to less, spend less time listening to what people say and more time watching to what they do. Because then that way I won't put the pressure on them. Because if they tell you, I was the kind of guy, if you tell me something, I just expect you're going to do it. And then when you wasn't doing it, guess what I did? I reminded you every day and we would get in fights. Me and Eric had those a lot. A lot. And I'm not picking on Eric. Eric's an amazing individual. But it took time for him to decide this is what he wanted to do. And I figured out by built through by the concept of building depth, I figured out a way to get through him until he was ready to go. I still want to kill him. But I figured out a way to get through him. And we found somebody to work with. And sometimes it doesn't turn out the way it did for him. Sometimes you find somebody to work with and then those people go away. And that's okay, right? Yeah, hello? That's okay, right? But he didn't. But we were still able to build our business while we were waiting. I love that guy. And yes, he has been through some challenges. Remember the first time he picked me up from the airport in his car? Well, him and Blue had almost the same kind of car. Holes in the floor. Blue, you'd actually have to wear earmuffs because the muffler was disconnected. But I remember, you know, I got my nice freaking new go to show your plan clothes on there, probably shorts and flip flops. He hits this water puddle and all this water comes through the floorboard and drenches me. And I think it was because I was telling him I was hot because there's no air conditioning. So he was trying to cool me off. That's the kind of sense of humor he has. But I have watched all different walks of life get into this business. Some of them struggling, like Trish and Eric struggled financially before they started. Others haven't, but I've watched them all win. I've watched their kids grow up. I've seen things change. I've seen both parents come home and raise their kids. I've seen the type of kids that their kids are turning out to be. You guys want to hear something cool? Yesterday, before I got on the bus, I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go down to my daughter's house to watch the little girls. She's got two little grandbabies. So that my wife could go over to the hospital with her and we'd get our first new little grandson. That's, it's, I mean, every single one of them. So, I'm a grandpa. So, you need to settle down on grandmas and grandpas ranking dancing. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't forget that. But just six weeks ago, my son Jaden, some of you met him. They had a baby, a little baby girl. So, we've gotten two grandchildren here in the last six weeks. Four total. What an amazing part of life. I got a new saying, or not a new saying, I just, all those times when I wanted to kill them. You know, anybody in here ever wanted to kill your kids? And then there's this little thing up here telling you, don't do it, you'll find out later. It's those grandkids. And here's an exciting thing too. Felicia, when we first got started, jumped in and was working really hard. And then got married, started having kids, and she's sidetracked. But she's my daughter. And I can't make her do this any more than I can make anybody else, right? But she's still here, and she's getting a check. She's made about $1,200 a month for the last six years. Do you think that helps them? Oh, yeah. Is it still there if she wants it? She loves the product. She does her auto ship. Do you think I want her to do it? Absolutely. I want her to have what we have. But she's waiting for somebody. I wonder who that could be. For those of you who don't get it, her husband. It's now his job, but anyway. But I'm telling you this for a reason, because then all of a sudden you jump down to my boys. One's on a mission for his church. He comes home in July. And while he was gone, he hit Pro 5. Is that pretty cool? And he's got a brother that they partnered up, and that's why they hit Pro 5. He's been working it while he's been gone. They can't wait to get back. But then there's Jaden. He's building the business too. None of them wanted anything to do with my landscaping business. I wonder why. <laughs> when we started, they watched the video. They learned a little bit about ProTandem. Every single one of them takes the product every day. And I didn't tell them to do it. 
I don't think I've ever told anybody to take the product. I take it because when I watched the video three times that night, before I got on an airplane to go down and find out what my future was going to be, see, I didn't want to sell the little yellow pill, but I was going to take the little yellow pill. I think it's something you said about who was talking about antioxidants being a billion dollar industry? Well, have we, have we learned about antioxidants all our lives? Do you remember the day when we'd never heard of them? And then here today it is a $6 billion business or whatever. What did you say it was? Okay, I missed about $60 million, billion. So, <laughs> my point is, is I'd never heard of oxidative stress. I didn't know what it was, but I knew I had it. I knew about antioxidants and they fight one to one and this fights a million per second, 24 hours a day. That's a no brainer for me. So I thought I'm going to just take a suitcase down. I'm going to roll all that stuff out, get as much of it as I can because I didn't think it'd be around. You know, I don't, you don't know. And uh, went down there and found out this is what my future was going to be. And then it dawned on me. A little nine minute clip changed my life. Well, got myself interested, not in doing the business. But I got myself interested in finding out what's going on. And I thought, man, if it had that kind of impact on me, I can find five or six stupid people like me that are gullible, that don't have that. I mean, think about this. I don't know if you guys are still happening today, but the friends and family and people we were working with in the beginning when we got started, they had to set up their blood testing labs and do their blood testing before they got started. They're no longer here. Those of us that didn't care about the lab work because we figured... Well, we didn't have any peer review studies done yet, but we figured maybe they're going to be positive. But anyway, long story short, I figured I don't need, I'm not smarter than Harvard or all these other universities that have done testing, so I can just probably go along with what they found out, right? People kill me. They are so humorous, and I love them all. And I realized a long time ago not everybody's going to do it, and that's really my point. Not everyone's going to do this. But a lot of us, or a lot of you, or a lot of people that aren't here, will sponsor their two or three that are going to get them to Pro 10. And they sponsor the ones that weren't going to do it because you've got a 95% chance that's who you're going to deal with first. You get my message? It might even be a 98.2 or 99.1. I don't know. Every single one of you are going to be different. But what I do know, if you're doing everything that you heard from these people today and these amazing leaders, and you're consistently talking to people, you're going to find somebody. And that's why I tried to take you back in time when Tyler and I left San Diego. We didn't know what the future looked like, but we knew what we could do, and we knew that we had an opportunity. If Brandon and Lynette wouldn't have showed up, now I don't know, I know most of you are in here, but I know there's a far mix of groups. I don't know about Gabe and Jill. You know, I don't know the numbers, so I want to be careful about how I say this. But if they wouldn't have showed up at that meeting that night, and then decide to go home in two months and go pro 10, a lot of you wouldn't be here today. Now, how long ago was that? Five years ago. So, what in the world do you think you guys sitting in this room the next five years of your lives are going to look like? What do you think is going to happen? Okay, now here's why I say this. In 2010, at the end of that year, there were 6,000 distributors in the company, okay, seven elite ranks, and no pro tans. Okay, I was going to write that on that little board so everybody back there could see it, but I thought I'd just say it. Was that a good enough visual? Do I don't need to repeat that? Okay, so I'm going to fast forward. 2014, or 13 or whatever, the end of 2014 fiscal year, there, oh, sorry, we did $11.5 million dollars in 2010, 6,000 distributors, seven elite ranks. Fast forward 2014, 2.14 million, 623 elites, and 14 pro tens. That's not, I'm not saying that for you to clap. That's all we've done? No, I'm not saying that either. What I'm saying is, do you think the company's struggling financially now? Do you think it proves that we didn't even know if the compensation plan was going to work? Can you believe Brandon jumped in on this, not even knowing if the comp plan was going to work? And I'm not trying to single them out. I just, 
it blows my mind. Do you guys ever go to a meeting and a sharp looking couple walks in and you meet them for the first time and then not too long later they're rinking, going through the rink dancing through the company? Was any of you found in the living room? Raise your hand. Any of you found in a living room? That means if your sponsor was related to you and you came over, kitchens or living rooms? Or even let's go, how about a restaurant? Did all of you just somebody said, hey, I'm having a meeting at my house and you showed up or at the hotel? Where were you found? Huh? Okay, so how did you see the comp plan on the telephone? I didn't. I didn't see the video either. So that's what I like about you. <laughs> so that, that raises a good question. When, what do we do? How, which way do we do it? Do we use a video? Do we not? I mean, she never even saw it. I saw it three times and I never, well, I did watch it again, but not by myself. Let me tell you when I use the video. I have never used any kind of information that supports our science to convince somebody they got to do the business. If somebody asks me a question about it, what do I do? Do you think I try to be the Dr. McCord or regurgitate the information? You guys, I don't even know what the ingredients are. And I did that on purpose. Because if I knew what they were, what do you think I'd say it when I'm doing my meetings? Now, I am guilty in the beginning. We did draw cells on the whiteboard and drew little SODs. It, it took me about four or five months to learn how to say some of those words. I use it when I have to, and if I don't need it, I don't use it. How's that? But I never once tried to convince somebody that they need to take the product. Everybody I talk to knows I'm in this business for one reason. So I could have bought Pro Tandem whether I did the business or not, couldn't I? I don't, I don't know if this is helping any of you, but one of the things that uh, I realized early on, not everybody's going to be like me. Every single one of you are going to be you, and you are the ones that are going to go pro tan. When you try to be somebody else, that person don't usually make it pro tan, because it's hard to duplicate a lot of my colleagues and people that I hang around with today. Like, how many of you can be a Skip Campbell? It's impossible. Somebody raised their hand. You don't even look like him. Um, or Tyler, or Brandon, or Gabe, and all you men. None, none of you in here could be Carrie, the man. <laughs> right? You have to be yourself. You're going to do things your way. But the things you need to learn is the behaviors that are going to allow you to succeed. That's why I started out with the message. We all got the same information. It's just... People that are struggling sponsoring people, I get this all the time, well, they're doing 15 plans a month and it's not working, like you said. And then you talk to them for a minute and they're looking at your shoes, they won't even look you in the eye. How many of you are going to sign up with somebody that's looking at their shoes? I guess if they're on the phone, you can't see what they're looking at, can you? But are you with me? It's in the belief, you've heard that from somebody, so I don't want to repeat it. It's in the belief that you deliver the message, that's what people sign up for. That's what they follow you for. Product don't move people. People move product. And I have seen lots and lots and lots of people's lives change, you guys, in the last six years. Because they have what? Oxidative. Right? And what does our product do? Reduces it. And that's it. I've never told anybody anything else other than that that will reduce your oxidative stress. But I've seen people's lives change. And because of the word network marketing, it's easy to hide behind the product, isn't it? For some of them. It's like a crutch. But my point being is we all have the same information. And based on what I just told you, there's 214 million last year. 623 elites, 14 pro tens, and uh, has anybody ever heard of a network marketing company that does a billion dollars a year? Oh, yeah. You have? Name some of them. Amway, New Skin, Herbalife. Oh, Amway. I've heard of that one. That's the one I got started in. I'll even finish that story. Okay? There's a few out there. And guess what they found? 
Can they study things? Where do you think we got the growth curve from that tells us when we're going to go into critical mass? Do you think somebody made it up? History. 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 So those, those companies have a million to two million distributor base to support that annual volume. Did you know that? Hello? Yeah. Can you guys count at least what I'm saying without me drawing on that board? One to two million. Do you is anybody in here believe that we're going to be a billion dollar company? Yeah. We have the only products, one of them, one of our products, the only one in the world, and you can't buy it anywhere else yet. Only from here that has third party validation that, that tells the general public that there's validation there if you want to use that. I said other products. <laughs> but you can't buy it anywhere else. You have the secret. Do you guys realize that? What about Axial? Okay, look. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't use it. That's how I'm made up. I still buy products from other places that I was in business that I like their products. I love it. The skin care. I put it on this morning before I left. <laughs> I love it. I love all of it. Okay? But when I sit down with somebody for the very first time, what makes our business unique? What am I trying to do when I sit down with somebody? I'm trying to get their attention, correct? Is that right? Okay, so the very first time, one time, I have to be a little bit different than the other network marketing companies, don't I? So I just use to my advantage for me, those things that work for me, that allow me to be different. Because one of the things you always hear in network marketing is what? They're all the same. No other company has a culture like us. But nobody knows that, do they? Until they come to the, one of these functions. So, one to two million distributors. So I'm not going to use the two million because that will make you sick. I'll just use one million. How many distributors did I tell you we had in 2014? 7,300. Did I say that? Okay, now I'm telling you, 7,300. I probably said something like 67. 7,300 distributors. Let's just round it up to 80. I'm going to take a few away. What's 80,000 minus 1 million? 920,000 more people need to enroll in this company to support a billion dollars in volume. You guys think you have an opportunity? You're, you got timing? How old are you? Two. A two-year-old can figure that out. Do you guys realize the seat you're sitting in? We didn't look so hot getting started, you guys, and we lost a lot of people because they didn't want to take the chance. You want to come up here? All right, come on. Go over here. Go up the stairs. Are you with me? We didn't look so good. Do you think we look good now? <laughs> Who's this? Is this yours? <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> She's cute. Okay, you sit up there and don't talk. Okay, you could talk. What's your name? Delaney. What? Delaney. Delaney. Wow. I'm going through so many emotions, I'm ready to go back home for the grandkids. <laughs> wow. All right, so I just want some of you that have never really done this industry before, or this is your first time, you will go through a learning curve. 
And I've had to go through a learning curve. And once you learn it, you don't have to relearn it again. But uh, when we got started, I went to school the next day. And I got my first lesson in network marketing. Now, I'm pretty fired up about it because I think I found something that nobody else knows about. Imagine kind of how naive that thinking is. So I learned my first lesson. Not Was I the only one in the world who never heard of it? Nobody else wanted anything to do with it. And I was going to college at the time. And I got to tell you something, you guys, because I didn't have any of that baggage or that preconceived notion or heard all the stories that people say about because they fail, they blame everybody else. That's what I've learned happens is they just make up stories why they didn't succeed. I didn't have any of that. So when I came home, I didn't look in the mirror and go, you know, what's wrong with you, Marcel? I looked in the mirror and I thought, what is wrong with all these people? Why are they so dumb? Because we were all going to college and what did we think they were going to do? They're going to hang the moon, weren't they? And you know what's sad? Is most of the ones I went to school with that went on to get their masters and their PhDs, I was making more money in seven months doing landscape maintenance than they were. I didn't go to school, I went to school to make money. I got into landscape maintenance to make money. I got into network marketing to make money. That's why I'm here. I consume the products because I love them. If I didn't love them and I could make money, because I've been in other companies where we've made money and the products were okay. We got some killer products here. So we went down that journey. I want to just tell you something, because I mean, I just, I hear these stories all the time, complaining. I don't have time to go through all the complaints. But when I started, we quit after five years because of a lot of little obstacles that came in, never going to do it again, slid our wrists, mixed our blood, and promised each other, me and my wife, that would never, ever, ever get involved in one of these again. Well, I'm glad I broke the promise. And she wasn't excited about it, and for a long time, all I got was show me the check, and that's all I need to know. Just so you know, and there's a lot more detail that I'd like to share, because maybe some of you are sitting here struggling with the spouse. But anyway, 12-year journey. 28 years old, retired around 40-something, 52, haven't had a job for 12 years. I don't care about the first 12. They sucked when I was going through it, and I remembered them every day. I haven't thought about them for a long time until I start hearing stories of struggles or obstacles or waiting two years before I want to get involved with my family and they're bugging me and all those things. I've seen all that and it's worth it. Um, I do got to tell you this because when all the pros three stood up, I got goosebumps because there's a guy in my neighborhood that's in, um, that is building this business. He's a chiropractor. And you know chiropractors, they're smarter than pro tens, right? <laughs> he just hit pro three. He's been in this business for two years. The first year, he did it his way. And I supported him. But one of the things that we've always tried to teach people is you go to them, don't have them come to you. So every afternoon, he'd have them come to him to the office, right? Wasn't working out too good. He wouldn't, do them at, he wouldn't do meetings at night because that was family time, right? Go to, he goes to all the functions and he wants the business. The thing I'm most excited about in these last two years is he didn't quit. He hung in there. It's probably too because we live in the neighborhood. There's a Pro 9 that lives in the neighborhood too. We're home all day. He likes the snowmobile. He can't because he's at work. So we make sure we call him every day. So he's seen a little bit of the lifestyle. But he hit Pro 3. And for the last six months, he's been traveling. He's been on the road. I did a road trip with him the other night. Four hour drive to Vernal. First guy we talked to just humored me for hours. He was awesome. And the pills changed his life. And he just got to get the pill in everybody's hand. That's all he talked about. And I tried to, I, I, didn't, I don't try to change him. I just said, look, when you do that, tell him about the business and tell him about this too. And then we went to another meeting. We did two meetings. And it was a house meeting with about 10 people in it. Met some sharp people. I'm watching his group come together from him doing building depth and doing one-on-ones. And the funny thing is, the group that's grown up in Vernal that's on fire right now is his brother who didn't listen to him two years ago. We don't know when they're going to sign up, you guys, and we don't know when they're going to do it. 
Uh, that was kind of, is it Brandy? Yes, sir. Two years? You watched Fred and those guys? Yes. She's the smartest one. She made sure it worked first. <laughs> but now she's working hard. But that's kind of what, that's kind of the same situation there. And now they're on fire. And then this guy shared his conviction. And, and here's just a nutshell, then we've got to move on to something I think is more important. He works in an industry where he's got a lot of influence in where he, work, where he lives and where he works. And they just had some hard times hit. And what, are you, what do big companies do when hard times hit? Yeah, he had to sit in front of people he's worked for for 20 and 30 years and tell them, you no longer have a job, but I still do. He is passionate. All those times I sat there and told the fever, you got to go through the numbers. You got to go find them. You don't know. Because me and him had a lot of conversations after his first three. How it's not working. It's not going to work for him. Blah, 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 blah. All those little comments you go through with brand new people. He's on fire, you guys. And he'll get to pretend you'll hear from him someday. And it's amazing to me. Those are the kind of people we're looking through. Those that will fight, weather the storm, fight through all the obstacles, no matter if they didn't get what they want. How many people do you know or have you sponsored that have quit in the first week or two because they didn't get rich? Yeah. You got some of those? Anyway, love you guys. How much time did I go over? Good, I'm right on time. Can you believe that? <laughs>